Hello, hello. All right. Just finished torquing up the drive plate to crankshaft bolts. Uh, 58 foot pounds, by the way. Um, you're going to definitely want to get all of your specifications in line so that they're easily accessible. And what I wanted to show you real quick was just my uh, setup. This is called a load leveler. And the idea, if you watch, is if I crank, I can change the pitch of the engine in just little tiny increments. And I always like to use this when I'm installing the engine because it's really hard to line up all your little bolt holes with a 300 pound engine. So this really makes life a lot easier. Uh, definitely recommend getting one of these if it's your first time doing one of these engine swaps. It's gonna make life a lot easier. You can certainly do this without the leveler. I just think it's a lot more difficult. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. I am running out of time, so I got to get this thing done. Sorry for the choppy end to this thing. When you set this engine back in, it's a lot easier with two people. But what you want to do, you want to really push the engine. It won't be that hard to do, but you want to push it because as the boom lowers, it's going to push the engine further out, uh, further away from the transmission. But right now, the engine is sitting almost exactly on top of the transmission, so I'm gonna have to push it uh, over to the other fender and then lower it very gently. It's a good idea to practice a couple times lowering the engine because if you move this throttle or this lever too fast, the engine's just gonna plummet. So just little movements, this is exactly the same. There we go. And now it's cleared the transmission. This is exactly the same as when we remove the engine. You're just gonna go a couple inches at a time, checking to make sure you're not stuck on anything, especially by the firewall here, because there's a lot of sensors and hoses and also the AC is there. And you just don't want to rest the engine on something and lower it because it'll break. So we're looking pretty good here. And you just keep on doing this. All right, the engine's just about halfway in there, and I'm gonna do something that I almost forgot right now, and I wanted to remind you too. Um, so when I got the drive plate onto the engine, remember the white paint marks that I made earlier so I could keep the relationship of the drive plate with the torque converter? So I've got the paint mark on the drive plate set facing directly down, like at six o'clock. And what I'm gonna do now is reach in and spin this torque converter to make sure that that paint mark is also at around six o'clock. And that way I can ensure that I'll quickly be able to line up the bolt holes and get my relationship correct. So I uh, don't want to forget that. Now when reinstalling the engine, once you get close, one of the tricks that I'll do is I'll use a couple of screwdrivers and I'll feed them through the engine to transmission bolt holes like that. And that way I can use that to sort of uses a lever to help with the alignment. Put another one over back here like that. And that way it helps to just act as guide pins so that I can pull this engine like that. Now I could probably feed an engine to transmission bolt, but you don't really want to use those to try and pull the engine and transmission together. Uh, I think this is a much better and safer way so you don't strip your threads or worse yet and more likely break the aluminum bell housing on the transmission. So there's a little tip. All right, we are just about there. And I know that because I've already got this bolt threaded in. And remember, I'm not threading it in and then using that to pull the engine and transmission together because if my flywheel is not all the way in the bell housing and I do that, then I'm going to bend and break the flywheel. So my test is right up here. I can see right here, that's one of those alignment dowels and that is actually in the hole. And there's another one back here that you can't see. And I can see that that one is in the hole. And the other thing is I've actually threaded in a second engine to transmission bolt. So I know that this transmission is lined up. It's taken me a good 10 minutes, maybe more to, to get to this point. It's very difficult to do this and also to line up your engine mounts and everything else that goes along with doing this. So um, take your time and uh, ask for help if this is the first time that you've done this or that you're doing this because you're probably going to appreciate the help. Let's go ahead and bring this up and see if it 
draws in. All right, you can see it's finally starting to draw in. And it's just about closed up, but I'm not going to close it all the way up just yet. I'm going to get all my other engine to transmission bolts started, get my starter bolt started, and once all the bolts are in, then I'm going to go ahead and lock it up closed. But I might need just a little bit of play to finish this up. So I'm going to go ahead and get that sealed up, and then I'm going to come back when I've got everything together, and we'll go ahead and start this thing up. But I'm making pretty good time here, so we should be able to get this thing started up. All right, I changed my mind because before I go like a madman and start reconnecting everything and putting on accessories and all that, um, do you guys remember right here, this is the drive, uh, the flex plate here, and this here is the torque converter behind it. Remember my white marks that I made uh, near the beginning of the removal? Well, what I want to show you here is before you go any further, after you bolt up your engine and transmission, you want to reach in with your finger and make sure that you can turn that with your finger. If you cannot, then, well, quite frankly, you, you might have a problem. Now, if it's, you know, just kind of catching a little bit or something, then you might be all right. But if, if that absolutely will not move at all, well, you, you might have a little problem there. Um, most likely what happened is you did not get your torque converter all the way set back into position. And even if that happened, it's unlikely you would have been able to completely close up your engine and transmission. So that's something very important to check. And there's another thing that I want to do as well. And that is when I get my bolt holes lined up here, um, you'll want to check your directions because on this model, there's a special funky thing. It actually has a different colored bolt here and this is the first bolt that goes in actually and the reason is because that bolt helps line up the rest of the bolt holes so that bolt is supposed to go in first the other thing is know the torque setting that's really important it's only 13 foot pounds on this model and finally it takes a long time to finish this up because remember you can't just go in sequence to the next hole and the next hole and the next hole and torque everything much like putting on a wheel or like when we put on the flex plate you've got to do this in a star pattern and then torquing ultimately to 13 foot pounds in a couple of steps so there's a lot of cranking to do that and I just wanted to make sure that I pointed that out that's it so obviously the next thing we want to do, top off all the fluids. Don't forget to add oil to it for sure. Um, but also it's very easy to forget that you need to add the coolant and that you've got things like, you know, you have the spark plugs loosened or removed because you were turning over the engine. So uh, double check all that. And I'm going to go ahead and top this all off with my fluids and everything. And then we're going to go ahead and get ready to start it. All right, before we start it, we don't want to get too excited. We want to think safety first. So what we're going to do is a couple things. The first thing is I'm going to turn the key to on a couple of times. So turn it on, wait a couple seconds off, on, don't start the engine. And that's going to run the fuel pump. Do this, obviously, if you have an electric fuel pump. If you have a mechanical fuel pump, it won't matter. But the idea is to prime the system with fuel. First of all, it'll help with the starting but also it's because when the system is full of fuel, that's when we can find leaks before we start the engine. And I've of course got my fire extinguisher handy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the car to on a couple times and check for leaks right now. All right, and here is my high pressure fuel line connection. You remember that from earlier and I see no leaks there and no leaks anywhere um, along anything that I've removed. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now we're gonna go on to the next step. All right, next step is with the ignition and fuel disabled so we don't add spark or fuel. I just want to turn the engine over for about 10 seconds or so. The idea is this engine's been sitting still for quite a while and I want to build up oil pressure in it before I start it. All right, now it's showtime. Boy, do you remember these stupid automatic seatbelts from the 90s? I hated those. All right, so what we're going to do now is um, go ahead and try to start the car. And 
It may not start right away, but uh, go ahead and just give it a few tries. If you hear any unusual noises or it's very clear the car is not going to start, go ahead and check everything out. Let's go ahead and see what happens. All right. <laughs> kind of sounds like a rice burner a little bit. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do now is let it warm up. We want to run the engine for a good 15 minutes, check for any leaks and anything like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and call up this owner, and I think he's going to be pretty happy today. So thanks again for watching. I really hope you found this helpful.